Hi, listeners. Our next guest is Liana James Blackwell. She is the director of the Bay Path University MFA in creative nonfiction and assistant professor of creative writing. We're going to talk about her work. She is a member of the Northampton Playwrights Lab. She's the former artistic director and playwright in residence of TKO Theater and the Inner Stage in the San Francisco Bay Area and co-founder and director of the Place for Writers at Mills College in Oakland, California. There's not enough time for me to say everything that she's done, but you'll get to know her on this show. I think you all know, if any of you that have listened for a long time, how important it has been for me to have my network be partnered with an educational institution. So I'm really excited that that institution finally came to pass in its Bay Path University. You'll hear more about that. And that came through working with Dr. Christina Hallett that I know you've heard on many of my shows and now has her own podcast. So I'm really excited about this. We'll be doing more interviews with faculty to find out what it is they do. And I think after the show that we just did now that you're going to hear, I'm probably going to become a student too. (laughs) It'd be hard not to um, once, once you hear this. So empowering. So I'm really excited for you to find out more about Bay Path and also about Liana James Blackwell. I'm not the house of cards that falls down easily. Oh, I'm strong enough to handle what you throw at me. Welcome to Mental Health News Radio. I'm your host, Kristen Sunanta Walker. Just what are we going to discuss? The intimacy that is mental health. Let's continue to make it as comfortable as discussing brain health or heart health. This show has been on the air for several years, and we have amazing co-hosts. And then we created a network of podcasters on mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com, a place where every possible facet of mental well-being can be talked about openly. My show, after several hundred interviews, the format is this. Intimate, deep, funny, touching, sometimes uncomfortable, but always vulnerable conversations with interesting people. The goal is to have you, our listening family, many of you who have become my good friends, feel as though you are listening in on private conversations. Thank you for tuning in and becoming part of this amazing journey with me and now with our network of podcasters. Just knowing this podcast might be helping any of you realize you are not alone on this journey called being a human being makes doing this podcast worth every second. After all we promised we be cordial. Liana James Blackwell. I feel so important to say your name like that. It's so great to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to meet you also. And we have the wonderful and amazing Dr. Christina Hallett on with us as well. Always happy to talk with you. (laughs) You two work together and we'll get into that. And our listeners have an idea. I I couldn't read, you know, it would have been the full length of my arm to try to read your entire bio, but I think I hit some pretty awesome highlights. (laughs) (laughs) One thing I, and I know we're going to get to talking about a seminar that's coming up, but I want to say this because I noticed it in looking at your bio. You used to work with or did you study at John F. Kennedy University? Yes, I did. Do you know Dr. Alvin McLean? I don't know Alvin McLean. I was an instructor um, at, at John F. Kennedy University for about eight years, right after graduate school, teaching in the undergrad completion program. Gotcha. And teaching a whole range of courses and getting to know some amazing people, but collaborating also, which was very much a John F. Kennedy pedagogy for cross disciplinary instruction. Is this somebody who teaches there now? He is the assist the associate dean for their college of psychology. Uh they have such good psychology programs yeah, and have been do. known for that for goodness, 30 years now? Yeah, they're, they're awesome. They were a client of mine years ago, loved uh, working with them and love, love, love him. So when I saw that, I went, well, hey, mm, it's oh. alumni of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're yeah, hoping for that small world thing, right? <laughs> right. The six degrees. Well, we do have small six enough degrees of that we separation. both have the connection there because right. um, out here on the East Coast, not many people are aware of John F. Kennedy. It's very different on the West Coast. 
True. Very true. Lovely campus. I was out there working with their um, behavioral health outpatient centers that they have too. So that was, that was awesome. But. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. And so tell our listeners, you know, they heard about what you do, but tell our listeners more about what you do and what you do with BayPath. I direct the MFA in creative nonfiction, which means that I help people find their stories. Mm. I help people find the voice to tell their story. And then in particular, I help people find and tell a story that they've been wanting their whole lives to tell. The median age in my program is about 47. So most of my students come after having done many things in the world, Mm -hmm. many things in life. Every one of them, though, has had a burning desire to write their whole life. And some have done it in journals or in blogs, but have never had a chance to really dedicate themselves. So I get people at that turning point in their lives when they feel as though I can't wait any longer. It's time. And Mm -hmm. that is such a wonderful place to be. It's so fertile and so rich. And often, which will come as no surprise to you, the stories that they have to tell are stories that shape the rest of their lives. And many of them are rooted in traumas. Mm. And writing those stories is a very powerful way of claiming back their lives and claiming who they are. And in particular, um, abolishing the shame that sometimes comes with carrying secrets around and learning that they're not alone. And so many of others in the program will have similar stories and watching my students evolve with each other over the three years they're together is just extraordinary. And that really is my job. I obviously teach a lot of writing craft and a lot of writing techniques, and it's a very rigorous program. The heart of it, though, the emotional heart is that. And that's what we start with. So I should also I'm, say, oh, go on. I was going to say, so when I'm ready to go back to school, <laughs> I, I already know that I'm going to go to Bay Path. Uh, so you have online oh, courses and you have courses there, but you will be one of my my uh, professors. <laughs> That's wonderful. When are you coming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I'm I'm running three companies and um, and doing this whole network. Oh, However, it is going to happen. So this is exciting. I mean, I was reading through your recent play, New Soul. I also want to hear about grim women. I mean, there's just so many things that I was reading about you. I thought, oh my gosh. And plus, Christina knows you way more than I do. (laughs) Christina and I are big fans of each other. Absolutely. Um, I was just about yeah. to say, Leanne is amazing. <laughs> I think the same thing. We, we connected as soon as we met. Absolutely. In you fact, know about people. Yep. It was at our, uh, it was actually at the president's reception when I had just started full time. And that's uh, right. Yeah, it was fantastic. And literally, Anna is one of those people where if you can see her in person, you just want to give her a hug. Mm. That the warmth (laughs) that comes from you is amazing. I'm hoping because your program is phenomenal. And I know that there's actually a multitude of our faculty who at Bay Path University who have then enrolled into the program as well because That's there's true. so much for them. And there's an event coming up soon that I'm hoping you're going to say something about because I want to add Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, please tell us, tell us, tell us because you guys are not that far. It's not, a, it's not a harsh drive for me to come up there. So what is this event and would I even be allowed in? <laughs> oh, goodness, yes, of course you would. This is every year the program hosts what we call Writer's Day. And it's an afternoon of workshops and talks featuring prominent writers who will discuss anything from writing craft and techniques to reading excerpts from their own memoirs to telling people how to get published. And it's open to the community as well as Bay Path students and grads. This time, we've decided to place the focus on what's called narrative medicine. And you're in the mental health field, so you probably already have heard this term and know what it is. But for those listening who don't, it's a broad term. 
Um, and it covers it covers a lot, but on two sides, starting with say you're a you're a doctor or a healthcare practitioner, narrative medicine is the practice of reading fiction and nonfiction, short stories and memoirs about people who have struggled with illness, struggled with disability, and by doing so, getting first person accounts of what it feels like to be inside the experience. And it's a deliberate exercise in increasing empathy and in learning how to better listen to patients and to pay special attention to their stories. So it works on that level. And then for writers or for anybody who is working through the, you know, the lingering effects of a trauma or the chronic effects of a disability or an illness, either in oneself or in one's family members, narrative medicine talks about how to write your way to a kind of healing. And it doesn't mean it's you know, it's magic and you write a story and then everything goes away. <laughs> <laughs> if only. If only. That would yeah. be fabulous. <laughs> I'd start writing right now. <laughs> Scott, wouldn't we all? But what it does do is it gives people a sense of power over their destiny and it gives them an outlet, an emotional outlet. And it also creates a community of others when we share our work. And so without going into too much detail, there's a lot of research done in this area now. There's actually a graduate program in narrative medicine at um, Columbia. And it's quite well known now. And what the research shows is that those who write about the experience who are undergoing treatment for, say, cancer, show better recovery results. They recover faster, they recover better. And they also gain a renewed lease on life. That's just one example, but there are so many of how people can use this tool to heal, to feel better about themselves, to and all the things that I was saying, to create community and to gain a sense of, of power over something that one can often feel powerless with. Oh, absolutely. So you're talking to it the right in a nutshell. Yeah, you're you're talking to the right audience in terms of our listeners and also Christina and I with with what you're talking about. This yes. Is the right audience. Um when is it and how would people um find out about it? It is Sunday. October 27th in the afternoon. We always start these in the afternoon so people can have a nice morning and get there. And um, Christina is on our first panel, and I cannot wait for this. Oh. And yeah. it's, at, it's at the Ryan Center, which is our brand new health science building. I guess it's not so brand new anymore, is it, Christina? <laughs> no, but, but we new. still think it's new, right. <laughs> which it's is a very in... new, gorgeous building um, in East Longmeadow. And there is an Eventbrite page that people can access with a fuller description, and I will give, I'll tell people how to find that. And it tells everything about it, and including there's a registration link. And it's $25 for the whole thing, and that includes oh refreshments. Wow. And the easiest way, I would say, to find it is to go to graduate dot baypath dot edu slash mfa okay. i'll say that again graduate dot baypath dot edu slash mfa that'll take listeners directly to the mfa page and right there on the top of the page is a link to the eventbrite where yes. you can register and find out about all the wonderful speakers and everything that we have planned. We'll put that out but in I will show say notes this too, just to make sure oh, everybody sure. gets that link. So Great. I will tell you that I am the first panel is called Healing and Recovery Narrative mm -hmm. Practices. I am going to be joining some really impressive people, which is why everybody go sign up, come join us. Mm -hmm. And part of what I'm going to be talking about is uh, my both of my books, Own Best Friend and Be Awesome, Banish Burnout, and what it's like to write books on a particular issue, what a, it is that I'm hoping to achieve with doing that, both for myself and for other people, and mm. the way that we can connect writing and self-care. Mm. 
Beautiful. Well, People are so excited about this. Um, one of the authors on the panel, Richard Hoffman, 20 years ago wrote um, a breakthrough memoir about being the victim of childhood sexual abuse. This was be way before um, people were writing and talking about it the way they are now, and especially for a man. And his book actually led to the conviction of his abuser. It's an incredible story, and there's there's so many more. Um, and also it's about his own healing and what that did for him as a result of talking honestly about it and telling that story. And our keynote, Dinti Moore, um, has come out. He's the co-editor of an anthology called Bodies of Truth, which will be will have lots of books for sale, including Christina's. <laughs> and this one is Personal Narratives on Illness, Disability, and Medicine. And each one of them is just a gorgeous story about all the different experiences that we have with this and how we get through it. No, oh, absolutely. I... It's so interesting that you're going to be talking about sexual abuse, especially a man speaking about it, because we're doing our film series, Mental Health Table Talks. And Mm. one of the episodes that we're going to be doing is going to be about men and sexual abuse. And we're going to do another one that is just sexual abuse in general. That's my, uh, comes from my background, but, um, but yeah, we mm. it's a long time coming and we have a lot of interest even from HBO actually as a possibility for this. It's an episodic series. So we're really excited about that. That was a personal mission of mine to make an episode be about that topic. Really? I'm so impressed. Um, you don't hear that as much. Um, oh, I hope you can come and, and have a chance to meet Richard. I'm going to try. Boy, Octa, I didn't realize it was coming up so close. <laughs> of course, because that's how we do everything, right? At the no, last minute. Last you know, minute. However, there is the option to join us on, if if you can't make it to Ryan, uh, we're, we're looking into broadcasting it via Facebook Live. Oh, that would be awesome. That I can do, for sure. So that if you know you can do that, I will just put your name on the list of people that we will contact Once we know that that's a go and you could join us that way. Fantastic. I love it. You know, I want to throw something in here because Leanna, your program is so valuable. (laughs) Seriously, I sound like I'm just doing a PSA or something here, but uh, (laughs) it isn't about the PR. In this case, I'm literally talking about the ways in which people can heal through writing. And one of the things that I just want to highlight is that, you talked about people who've always wanted to write, but not everyone thinks, oh my God, I can, or I should, or I will will be able to write a book, right? There's people also who are Ah, uh, yes, to that's true. Yeah, you know, and, and that's it because I think that even if I just reflect for a moment, I had an idea for a book that ultimately was not the first one that I wrote. And it was one of those oh. things that I worked on episodically and minimally for half a dozen years and then uh, came up with the idea for own best friend did that and then the original idea is what became the second book be awesome and and there's a third one that's in the works and I've also done now a couple workbooks and stuff like that but at no point did I really see myself as the person who's an author or the person who would join an Mm. MFA program or those kind of things. And I think your program is a fabulous mechanism for people to imagine who they might be that they had never even considered. That is a wonderful observation because I do have many students like that who have a dream but not the confidence. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but notice that it seems often, not always, but often connected to gender. Mm-hmm. A lot of women come in bursting with talent and with no confidence at all. And there's a reason for that. And part of this program, <laughs> it said, so which true. we could talk about for hours. Yes. And, and part of the program is also, you know, about looking at what's underneath that. 
What's behind that? It's not all just about rah-rah. You can do it and go, girl. Although there's a big part of that. We're extremely positive and supportive. That's how we think writers grow as artists. At the same time, it's important to investigate, you know, what are all those voices that are telling you you can't do it? Right. Where do they come from? Do you, do you really believe that? Let's, let's look deeper at that. And it ends up being a journey on a lot of levels and gaining that confidence so that the voice is not only a writing voice, although it is, but it's a voice that is used in the world. It is used to write books and do the things that maybe you thought you couldn't do, not because you can't, but because you were told you couldn't. Right. Those lovely voices that we heard uh, as kids, maybe from other people, and then they became our own voice rolling around and you carry it around with you your whole life and you don't even really realize it. Yeah. It's so important to, to challenge that, you know, at whatever time it makes sense for us to do it in our lives. But it seems like a lot of the people, like you said, Christina, they come in and think, I don't know if I really belong here. I don't even know what I'm doing. And it turns out they always, they know a lot more than they think they do. Absolutely. We all do. Right. And that's to me where this completely connects to mental health and wellness, because Mm -hmm. the entire idea where we all cross over is in supporting and encouraging people to allow themselves to grow, to dream dreams, to be their best self, to give voice to the parts of themselves that have been silenced or that they didn't even believe they had within them. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there. I had an interesting experience where I had a, a film director doing, I, you know, Christina, I cannot let this go. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, say anything negative, but just was interesting because I'm hearing you guys talk about positivity and the nurturing of, of someone. And, and especially when it's around something like sexual abuse, which obviously affects your mental health in a negative way, but we're doing films about mental health and the director was very critical. You're not doing it right. You've got a uh, camera face. I hear this in my ear all day coming from the director. And of course that's having an impact on me, the host. And I'm thinking mm. this, it, this is not a transformers movie. We're doing something about mental health. So I need you to be positive. I need you to be nurturing. I need you to, the whole excuse of, look, I'm the director. We've got to get this done. We only have eight hours. Uh, so I just need to get to the point. Da, 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 da. And I heard all that argument and I still said, then go direct movies where that's okay. But directing something where you're talking about mental health, that is not going to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like that. This is not Transformers. <laughs> it's not a Marvel movie. Right. This is, you know, people are going to be coming and talking about things like th- that they were sexually abused. They don't need to hear in the middle of, of their talk about it. Okay, we need your energy up. I want to see some conflict. You need to be more animated and stop. <laughs> do- I mean, oh, this, it was horrifying. God. I sat there going, what? wait a minute, excuse me, what, what, what is this? So it it was fascinating (laughs) with everything that I do like this. There's all, I always wait for the contrast to come. And so Mm -hmm. when it's something negative, there's going to be this positive contrast that comes that affirms that I was right. Not that I'm always right. I'm just saying (laughs) this particular thing. So you guys are the contrast, uh, the really positive contrast to that. I was right. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad we could be that for you. Thank you. Well, and, and he it, was wrong. <laughs> uh-huh. Here's another thing, though, because I think when, and I love that you shared that, Kristen, thank you. Uh, because when people often think about, can I even imagine taking a course in writing or going to a retreat? Yeah. And Leanna, you have to talk about that. But people mm. imagine criticism, right? They imagine the red pen and sort of getting destroyed. And if you're already feeling a little shaky or mm, I don't know if what I have is something someone else wants to hear, then going forward with that image is just enough to stop you in your tracks. Oh, yeah. And so Drop I out. really, 
Yes. So I really appreciate the fact that that's not where you or your program are coming from and that it's really growth oriented and not uh, sort of this indirect self aggrandization through criticism of others. Oh, I'm so glad you made that point, Christina. I have been in writing workshops in the literary world. It's not uncommon at all to go to a writing conference or any kind of writing retreat and study with top names, you know, and this, I won't name names, but you will find writers with reputations, national, international reputations, ripping student work to shreds. Mm -hmm. And the myth mm -hmm. is that you got to be able to take it. If you really want to be a professional writer, you got to take it because it's going to be hard out there. And of course, it doesn't work like that at all. If you are destroyed before you even get out there, you won't go there. Right. And it, it's that's not how an artist grows. And that's that's not how to nurture the creative spirit. There is a time when something has been developed and something has been worked on and the student needs and deserves honest feedback. But it's always, always got to be framed with what's working and what you can do to make it better. Right. Which is entirely uh, different, right? That, and that approach is what allows people to grow. And you, you both know that I talk about compassion and self-compassion all the time. And people are mm -hmm. always saying, oh, well, you know, if I'm going to be self-compassion, I'm letting myself off the hook. I'm like, no, compassion. And no. Compassion, they're <laughs> yeah. all about accountability. That's right. right. It's about speaking truth in a manner that is respectful and with dignity and geared towards growth. And that kind of feedback is fantastic. It's, we need to struggle to be able to grow our neural pathways and to learn new things. That, that's what helps our hippocampus change. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to have the feedback. If someone just says, hey, yeah, that's great, that's great. Psst. That doesn't do anything for you. You need to know, here's an area, look at this, what about that? And that's one of the things, and, and that's where your pers personality and your way of being, Lana, I think is so helpful and so powerful. Thank you, Christina. I feel the same way about you, and I've seen it over and over again. <laughs> and I think you. people who read own best self, that's exactly what they come away with. Oh, yeah. Lots and I love what you said about... Mm -hmm, Lots of underlying. It's accountability <laughs> to the self. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, Honoring it can... ourselves, taking ourselves seriously enough to say, I'm worth this time and investment in getting better. Mm. And I'll do what I need to do. Yeah. It's a very mature way to motivate people. It's a very self-actualized way to motivate people. I think you have to be someone who has done some work on yourself, um, maybe even some therapy with someone like <laughs> Dr. Christina Hallett, uh, in order yeah. to get to this place. It's an elevated place of understanding that just is steeped in empathy and human connection. And I think when you haven't done that work, um, you know, your ego is, is overriding a lot of what you do. And so while you know, the inner critic that you have that's really loud, that comes out in terms of being that critic of everybody else. Does that make yeah. sense? Wonderful yeah. way to put it. Mm -hmm. You have to have done the work yourself. I couldn't run this program if I were unconscious <laughs> of myself. <laughs> it's not possible. I, I really need you to down that path. Yeah, you'd be, I really need you to dig deep, even though <laughs> I am as deep as a saucer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I want to stay superficial, but hey, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. How can I ask a student to do that if I haven't done it myself and made a practice of doing it? And it's yeah. hard. This this is hard work. I mean, that's the thing. You cannot mm. be emotionally lazy. <laughs> no, no. It, it doesn't it fly. Mm -hmm. Leanna, it does. You, it's worth it. You have, because Kristen, I don't know if you know about this, but Leanna, tell them about the uh, August, I always want to call it retreat, but that may not be the right word for it, but what you do in August every year. 
Oh, thank you. We go to Ireland every year for a week-long residency in a little town on the west coast called Dingle. It's a beautiful, beautiful seaside Irish town that just happens to be, just for one thing, the food capital of Ireland. And I don't know how we manage that, but it is. <laughs> good choice. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good for mental health as well. That's I'm a right. strong believer in that. And it's a beautiful town with a strong literary and artistic history. And so it comes alive in the summer. And we go there and we spend eight days um, with each other. We take over an inn and we work on our stories together. And we invite writers from all over the country and several writers from Ireland to come and join us. And people transform there. There is something about the place itself, the history, and the way that history is held, both in the landscape and in the people, and in their appreciation for beauty, and in their appreciation for for poetry and for language. And that all comes to the fore when we're there together. And we just build this intimate community and everybody loves everyone else by the end. Oh, and we can, part with tears. Yeah, I can only imagine. It's a big Irish love festival. <laughs> Irish, it's a love festival. Christina, I want you to go. I know. I, I have said the last two years that I'm thinking about it and, and I really am. And since I have book three uh, that I have been collecting articles and research and information for it, it's looking much more possible for 2020. <gasps> oh, yeah. Really? Yes. That makes me very happy. Very, <laughs> very happy. maybe you were just at it because I know you were just in Ireland. No, I happened to be speaking at an event called One Woman Fearless in Dublin because, you know, why not go to Ireland? <laughs> I can't think of a single reason not to. <laughs> Well, I have a, 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 a guest that's been on many, many times. She's still our most popular guest. Her name is Christine Louis de Cannonville, and she's extremely mm. humble. She lives in Dublin, and I'm going to tell her to listen to this show so that she – I'm not going to tell her. I'm going to ask her to listen <laughs> to this show. I'm like, who am I? Anyway, I'm going to ask her to listen to this show, and the moment that she hears her name, I know her so well because she's also a very close friend. Her cheeks are just going to <laughs> – flush crimson <laughs> but she's she's phenomenal and she's our most played guest she's phenomenal i think it's because everyone just wants to hear her accent but i'm sure i'm sure it's the material too <laughs> yes so Kristen, have you been thinking about doing some writing you know, I always do. And I, I, oh. I do, I love to do it. I always think about it. And I have those same voices that you guys were talking about. Well, you're not good enough. And you know, with head, this is how kind of sort of sad it is. I have publishers that have said the moment that you write a book, we will publish it. Like how many people have that, you know, opportunity. So, and, and I'm still like, and this has been going on for five years and I'm still like, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. So see, Leanna, I, I wanted to gather that yeah. out of Kristen because I know this to be true about her. Uh -huh. So doesn't she sound like a perfect candidate for the MFA program? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You do, Kristen. And I would love at any point to talk to you about it and answer your questions because I can tell you what you have to offer and what you say about it sounds so much like so many of my students mm, um, who are incredibly accomplished women, but with those questions, you know, and the community here is like no other. And I've taught in a lot of institutions and this is really something remarkable we've got going here and, and also just having colleagues across campus like Christina. <laughs> Love that. There's been nothing, nothing like this. Yeah. I'm Please. on the, as you were talking, I'm on the apply for admission page. Yes. <laughs> yes. Diana, 
here. It's not, this is, we're going to use Kristen as the example, but I know this is true for so many of our listeners because the number one thing that I've encountered is that students say, or potential students say, oh my God, I'm way too busy. I've got this, this, and this I'm doing. We already heard Kristen try to worm out of this <laughs> by saying that. So could you speak to how do you manage getting an MFA, which sounds frankly a little intimidating, uh, when you're particularly when you're already thinking about, oh, maybe I'm not good enough with a super busy life and work and everything else. Oh, God, yes, because this is the this is the big question. It comes up over and over and over again. I have a full time job. I am caring for my elderly parents or I have children at home or all three. This is not unusual either. <laughs> and I run three I companies. Hear often, <laughs> I run like you. I run three companies. I'm doing this incredible podcast. And what we often find, though, is that something about engaging in the structure of a program and having a group of people who are waiting for what you have to say yeah. opens up opportunities for time that you never knew you had, but you do. And the other advantage of the program is that you can go very part time. So I have people who are blazing through it. And I have people who are taking their time and doing one course at a time per semester and finding that quite manageable. And also, because it's online, it really helps because people can find their own times to log in when it makes sense. I have students who log in in the morning at 5 o'clock mm. every morning, and they're there for a couple of hours doing their work. Or they do it when they get home from work or on the weekends or a mix. And that's what's so nice about this, too. And also why I think online learning, I'm such a champion of it. It's not the only kind. And I, I happen to like being in the classroom too. But what I like about it is it makes it accessible for a lot of people, including I have students with disabilities who could not do this any other way. And it makes it accessible to them. It makes it accessible to people with social anxiety. Right. It's a very different experience. It makes it accessible to people who are running three companies. <laughs> and and here's, you know, since we're going all in here, here's the other thing I think. <laughs> okay. So I'm you know, we're working with Baypath now with the net with my network and I've wanted that kind of a relationship with the university for so long. If I go and apply it, it's like imposter syndrome and they're going to read how I really write and see how I, much I don't know or don't really deserve or don't have what it takes. And they're going to be like, oh my, okay, why did we, you know, that's the kind of stuff that starts coming up in my head. <laughs> of course it does. It comes up in the head of people who have been writing for a long time too. Mm -hmm. And we all have those. We all have those fears and those insecurities and those voices that say, who are you? Mm -hmm. Or who do you think you are? You don't know what you're doing. Um, the imposter syndrome that is so prevalent, again, a lot, very prevalent with women especially. Right. But I notice it with male artists as well too because it's just hard to carve out an identity as an artist and a literary artist in this culture we live in, which is all about results and and accolades right. and this path is more reflective and the, the results are there our students get published all over the place when they go through this program while they're in it and after they graduate that the results are internal as well oh and that's, yeah that piece that inter that would be why i would you know, do it. Mm -hmm. Some of it would be, okay, well, no one's going to want to publish anything I write. So I'll just do this for the internal work. There's that that goes on in my head. <laughs> you but know, you have publishers saying. I right. know. It's ridiculous. Right. I know. I know. I know. It's ridiculous. I told you <laughs> I will partner with you. We'll just bang it out. But uh, here's the other thing. I'll tell you that. what. I have, an, I have a suggestion. Okay. One of the ways that students check out the program without committing to it is by joining us in Ireland for a week. Uh -huh. You do not have to be enrolled in the MFA to really? go to Ireland. Oh, no. No, any writer, any writer from any background is welcome to come with us. We, it's about half MFA students and all the rest are writers from all over. And I've had people come and come with us for the week just to enjoy the experience and then after that, say, I've got to do this MFA. 
oh, I would just be goo goo gaga. And I already am like, I feel it pulling me, pulling me. Want to go hang out in Ireland, Kristen? Hell yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. That would be a wonderful way to come and just get a feeling for it. And experience, you know, how we really do work with people and what the writers are like and what the community is like. At the same time, just having the best time of your life. Um, <laughs> it's all of those all, things. Yeah, and, eat, and, eat, and eating in the uh, eating capital yes. of, of Ireland. So listeners, Ireland. I, I hope you're hearing what's happening because I hope it's happening for you too. <laughs> I, you know, I've, you listen to my show. You've listened, some of you have listened, God help you, since the beginning of history with this show, which is quite a number of years. And you listen to other podcasters on the network. So I, I know, you know, if you listen to me, I know you have a lot of the same issues that I do. (laughs) This is a perfect place for you to go to, which is why I wanted to, you know, do something with a university. And then when I read all about Bay Path, and I mean, I can't even believe the keynote speakers that you get for your conferences every year oh yeah i mean what on earth ariana huffington <laughs> yeah yeah one barbara walters yeah i mean we've had powerhouse mel robbins was women just last year yep unbelievable that's right yep yep I'm i happen sure. to be speaking remember I, who it is remember i spoke last year let's not forget that yeah it's pretty <laughs> awesome oh let's not ever forget that and <laughs> and you sell your books there too yep Yep. And I know because uh, I I work with the bookstore. I work with them constantly because they order all the books for us for all of our writers conferences. And they told me that you were the best seller at the conference. Oh, oh, really? I I'm didn't so know not that. Surprised. Oh, so that's not fabulous. Surprised. I love it. Hey, I wanted to share something with you guys real quick, Absolutely. which is that I've got an application out to a place, and I haven't heard back yet, so I can't say much about it. But I have a talk idea that's a a pretty big, daring idea, and it's all about imposter syndrome. And so I'm going to leave you with this. I'm just going to leave you with this. Think evolution and reflex and imposter syndrome. Evolution, reflex, and imposter imposter syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm just saying Mm. that I am really hoping that I'm going to have a – at this particular venue I've applied to, but if not, then it will find life somewhere and be sharing a different way to think about and therefore manage or address imposter syndrome. Oof, that sounds deep. Oh, awesome. wow. Yeah, yeah. Will you please keep us posted? <laughs> I'm yes, I will. I'm super excited about it. Well, and actually, why not give you another plug? I mean, me another plug for myself. Why not? Um, so you already <laughs> both please know do. I did a TEDx talk in September, TEDx Farmingdale on redesigning self love, mm-hmm. and I it went public mm. yesterday. I'm doing TEDx Bay Ridge Women on December 15th. And I'm just going to tell you that it's related to the truth and the science about self-affirmations. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I want to be part of this. December 15th, baby, in New York, (laughs) TEDx Bay Ridge. Oh, that's good. I'll take the train. Yeah. Yep. I love going into New York. So that's, but it's because, so this is part of really what I'm speaking to. I know that just was like, sounded like ridiculous self-promotion, but I'm super excited about these things things where I feel really honored to be a part of. And that's one of the things that, uh, Leanna, you are just very much all about. And I also think the Bay Path University community is around supporting other people, really celebrating wins, helping yeah. lift people up. There's none of this like, oh, you did this. Well, never mind. I'm going to do that. That that whole competition thing isn't there. It's all as no, we don't have that, which yeah. can be rare. I mean, it's- that can be really rare in academic environment. I grew up in academia, so I don't think there's anyone. Oh, in you know, that that's extremely like a- rare. 
yeah, that, that I don't think anyone doesn't have like two master's degrees and a PhD or, or um, MD from like Yale or Harvard or Dartmouth or, you know, that's, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's the environment. Mm-hmm. I know it. I know it well. I didn't go that <laughs> route, but I know it well from growing up around. I mean, I used to crawl around um, the, like uh, my mother would be holding faculty meetings with these huge tables, which probably weren't that huge, but as a five-year-old, they were huge to me. So I would be crawling on the floor, (laughs) tying a professor's shoelaces together while they're trying to do... (laughs) That's where I grew up. I'm sure you endeared yourself. (laughs) Yeah, somehow I got away with a lot of stuff just because I had a cute smile. (laughs) Aww. All I need to know is um, how I can help you (laughs) make your dream of a book come true. (laughs) See? Okay. She's saying that to you too, listeners, not just me. So you'll be hearing more about this uh, on my other shows that I do because I'll be talking about this experience there. And I so want to support Bay Path. So listeners, you know, of course I'm doing a, a plug for them. Please, if you're on the fence at all about furthering your education or taking it in a new direction or even starting your educational journey, like I said, I grew up in you know, the education world. And I've wanted this kind of a relationship with the university for so long. We finally found the right one. Please go to Baypath, B-A-Y-P-A-T-H dot E-D-U and just check them out because um, I will probably be there with you as a student if you guys <laughs> decide <laughs> to do this. Well- and, you know, to add into that, Kristen, and I'm just, this is speaking for the university as a whole, because I feel so strongly about this. We have traditional undergraduate that is women only, and really That's the right. mission is to support uh, and the rising and the education of women. So we mm-hmm. have many, many, many first generation college students who join us. We also have a fully online program, the American Women's College, for right. women to get their bachelor's degree. And that's often women who are at non-traditional college age, but who have been saying, you know, I, I maybe I started or I took a mm-hmm. course or I didn't think I could. And it's a fabulous opportunity, as well as mm-hmm. clearly the master's program that I'm in, that Leanne is in, and a whole host of others. Yeah. And I'll say this, you know, the, the things that we tell ourselves, there's a little piece of me coming out that realizes that a lot of the reason why I didn't go to school was just to kind of get back at my parents for being so school is so important school. You're nothing without school. Da, 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 da. And those are the ways I bring that up to say, these are the ways that we sabotage ourselves. Like that might've been necessary as a kid for me to, you know, establish independence and, Mm -hmm. you know, stop. There are other things like sexual abuse going on that are far more important than whether or not I got an A in math. And that was true as a kid. But when you carry that stuff out into adulthood, (laughs) that's when those things that we did to protect ourselves as kids and end up hindering us. Now, has it hindered my career? Absolutely not. But it's, it's something I've always wanted to do, but that little thing, that chip, you know, that we can carry around on our shoulder has played a big role in me going, I'm not going to do that. Well, how has that served me? Well, not at all. <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. I didn't go back to graduate school till I was 35 for the, so many of the same reasons. Right. Then I got there. And I was, I thought I'm going to be the oldest person there and everybody, same thing. Everyone knows so much more. Right. And I got there and I wasn't first the oldest and it didn't matter. It was a whole range and it was one of the best experiences still of my life. I still have intimate friends and colleagues um, from that time. And we support each other still. We, we go on a writing retreat every year. Mm. This is the benefit being steeped in this environment. And for any of us that feel like for whatever reason, we just really don't deserve to experience that. Join me in 
getting over that and realizing, yes, we do. We totally, totally deserve you this kind of environment. You completely do. Yes. <laughs> you completely and absolutely do. And we're examples of it. How did yeah. this show turn into me? Now I feel like I'm being very narcissistic. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. I start coughing. <laughs> Well, okay. Leanna, please tell our listeners. I mean, I, I know I've said the website, but there, is there, are there any other places they should go online to find out more about you? Well, listeners are encouraged at any time to reach out to me on email with questions. And I'm very good at responding promptly. So if you go on the website and you see information that interests you, or if you just want to reach out, it's L-J, so Liana, L-J, Blackwell, and the Blackwell is spelled black like the color, W-E-L-L, -L. so L-J, Blackwell, at baypath.edu. Fantastic. And Christina Hallett, same thing. You can find her through the Baypath University website, and also you can tune into her show on the network, Be Awesome, and also my show, Mental Health News Radio. Christina, thank you so much for doing this. Ugh. It wasn't really an interview. It was a discussion. So it's thank you for joining me. I know. I know. I love interviews. it. <laughs> well, thank it you. Fabulous both. conversation. Yeah. I felt like we could have talked all afternoon. Oh, God. Thank absolutely. you so much. <laughs> and listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Be Awesome and Mental Health News Radio. Sometimes I'm passive aggressive, but never without good intentions. I heat up and act on my emotions. Thanks so much for listening to Mental Health News Radio. Our podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, and hundreds of other podcast apps. Or you can visit our website at mentalhealthnewsradio.com. If you have a question or would like to be a guest, become a podcaster on our network, or join the amazing organizations that help keep us on the air, please email us at info at mhnrnetwork.com. Get ready for that special goodbye from our resident therapy dog, Miles, and a special thanks to Emily Sohn for letting us use her incredible song, Cordial, for our podcast music. Listen to the full song on SoundCloud at emily.sonne. Don't be surprised when I don't hate on you. After all, we promised we'd be cordial. Sometimes in you I can fight. Good boy.